Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Brad Hart and welcome to episode 5 of Let's Talk. On today's episode, we're going to be discussing a few different things. We're talking about Tyron Woodley getting a tattoo of Jake Paul's name on his leg after losing in a boxing match. And we're also saying a big thing, festivals are back. But before we get kick-started into the episode, pull yourself up a chair, pour yourself a drink and let's talk. Okay, so a few days ago we had Jake Paul versus Tyron Woodley. And on that undercard we also had Tommy Fury, brother of Tyson Fury, fighting one of the sparring partners. Now we previously spoke about this in an early video and all about it, but obviously the event has happened and the kind of... The hype's gone a bit because we saw the fight and, the, and the, 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 I think the execution of the fight wasn't, expe it wasn't exactly what we were expecting. We all wanted one thing, Jake Paul knocked out clean. But of course this didn't happen and it's starting to raise a bit of discussion in the boxing community. It's starting to make us think, is Jake Paul actually a good boxer? Is he better than we thought? Because he's just gone against Tyron Woodley. You know, he's retired, he's slightly older and he did lose his past, pretty much all his previous fights in the UFC. But he hits like a hammer, he's fast, he's agile and come on, look at the shape that Woodley was in. He was impeccable shape. Jake looked like in similar shape, but he looked like solid muscle Woodley. What we always say that muscle doesn't mean much in the fighting game because we've got Tyson Fury who doesn't have exactly the biggest six pack, doesn't have a six pack at all. But do you know what? He's faster and he hits like a hammer. And I think the best example of a six pack doesn't prove that you're a good fighter or the best shape is Andy Ruiz Joshua 1. Like, if we just get taken back to that fight, I remember watching Joshua and Ruiz have it out with each other and thinking, Oh, this is a walk in the park for Joshua. It's going to be easy work. And then he got absolutely dominated and annihilated and knocked out. And I remember as a fan, I was thinking, Joshua's on the canvas. What's going on? But anyway, anyway, enough about them. Do you see where I'm coming from with physiques? Anyway, they both look like they're impeccable shape, better than the Askren and Jake Paul fight. And I was expecting a bit of a war. And we did get a bit of a war. We lasted the eight rounds and it went to a split decision choice to Jake Paul. And I do think, generally speaking, it was a good performance, you know, Ta Woodley actually nearly knocked Paul. Have a look at this clip here. But at this juncture, he's... Oh, oh, seen the jab, how about that? As a feint, and then the right hand kind of pushing wow. him against the ropes. Could you... you can see here, he did knock him, and he nearly had him. And he was in the ropes. He was genuinely in the ropes, and he could have went and fell through. But I don't think Woodley applied that pressure. I don't think Woodley put enough pressure into the fight. I think if Woodley had upped it a slight bit more, maybe had an extra month in camp, we would have seen a different result. Could have seen a great hand-on-hand -hand battle where, you know, Jake knocks Woodley and then Woodley knocks back. But to me, even though Jake won, I thought it was Woodley's fight. You know, I've watched it a few times now when BT's just released the um, highlights and I started to watch it. And I was thinking, right, you know, this, this and this. And it really took me back to one fight, McGregor Mayweather. Because in that fight, we saw a UFC style, and I'm obviously not putting Jake Paul and Floyd Mayweather's level here. Calm down. I know you're getting angry. Chill out. It's all right. But the stance. Tyron's stance was a very MMA-like stance. And of course, he's going to adopt that same stance because he's a trained MMA fighter. But it was very, very similar to McGregor's in the Mayweather fight. And once again, it didn't seem that effective. He had his hand out. He was fishing for a counter. Constantly fishing for a counter. And... I just don't think it worked because he clearly didn't manage to get inside enough. He was, ga he was gauging his distance because Jake had the reach. But on the other hand, I thought he should have played the inside. But regardless, talking of it all, it was a great match. And also onto the big thing about the fight, tattoos. Okay, so let's just get this straight. We've got Jake Paul, who's gone to Tyron Woodley, they've had a fight, and he's now gone, if you want a rematch with me, these are the terms. You need to get I Love Jake Paul tattooed on your thigh, and then I'll do the, then I'll do the rematch. Now, as we're all aware, there, obviously there is a rematch clause, but this adds a bit of hype. And imagine if he actually got the tattoo. It's quite embarrassing. Now, let's just break this down one more bit. If Jake got the tattoo, it wouldn't matter as much. Like, I don't think it would really matter because you couldn't see it. He's got his head, he's got his chest, he's got his arm, he's covered. Tyron looks like he's a bit emptier on the tattoo side. So it would stand out like a sore thumb. But I just don't think it's the best choice. So please, Tyron, don't do it, mate. Don't do the tattoo, just go, look, if you want a rematch, I'm the money fight, because it's true. It's true, as much as Jake Paul is the money in the fight, because we've had a cl the closest fight he's just had, a rematch means a lot more money, a lot more eyes. So I think Tyron has the power here. And I also want to discuss one thing. Festival's are back! Yes, festival's back. 
back and that means we've had Leeds, we've had Reading, we've got Creamfields coming up, we've had tons and they, they still look like they stink, they still look overpopulated, they still look sweaty and they still look fun and it's great to see them going ahead. It's great to see thousands and thousands of people together in one space having so much fun and just kind of dancing and kind of ignoring this whole Covid thing that we've just had. Of course I do believe the testing regulations were still high which obviously looks fantastic. And I just thought, I just think it's great to have everyone back together. And then when you start start watching these little TikToks of camp walls and all this and people throwing eggs at each other, it just looks like a general great laugh. And I just can't be happy that we've got everything back to normal. You know, what do you guys think? Do you think this thing's going to last? Do you think it's going to last this normality? I personally do. I think the COVID vaccines are going to come in. And as much as I know there is a split on the COVID side of things, people want a vaccine, people do people want not want not want a vaccine. But regardless, I think there's going to be a happy peace and we're going to come to some type of conclusion where we can all live quite happy. But I'm just over the moon. I'm glad we've got festivals back, we've got music shows, go to the cinema, went to see, um, what did I go to see the other day? I went to go see a film. That's terrible. I went to see two films. I went to see Suicide Squad and I went to see Don't Breathe 2 and I forgot both of them. But yeah, it's just nice to have cinema, cinemas back. It's nice to have, you know, casinos. It's nice to have paintballing back, gyms back, everything back to normal and nightclubs, which is weird. It, it, it sounds really weird to say we've got nightclubs back, but we've got them back and normality's back. And I know we've already chewed over this, but just the, the, the hype around the festivals recently has got me really excited. And I can't wait to see what happens next year when we've still got no COVID and everything's pumping and building back up. Because at the moment, financially, the country's a bit scarce from last year. So as soon as all these companies start building back up for economically and financially, the festival's going to be mad. Now, on today's episode, guys, we've discussed two very different topics, but two topics I really wanted to get off my chest. So I really, really thank you guys for watching today's video, episode five of Let's Talk. And I really, really am enjoying this series and doing every single episode. If you do ever think of a topic you want me to cover, please do follow me on Instagram and DM me. Comment on one of my pictures or comment on this video about the idea. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell notification. Once again, guys, thank you very, very much for watching and have a great day.